This pastor was arrested for the second time after protesting drag queen story time for children at public libraries. Yeah. Do you have a measuring tape? Measure? Do you have a measuring tape? Show us the Where's the measuring tape? Excuse me, we're in the parking lot. It's so far away, this is not lawful. Listen, we, we don't have a measuring tape. We're down here. You can't this do this. This is absolutely unlawful. We're actually just hanging out in a parking lot. Evidence against you? You can call a lawyer. Attack meters from that library. Okay, you can call a lawyer. Officer, what's your badge number, please? 508. Thank you. Library. Don't worry. Come on, sir. You are capable of stopping. Just stop them. Get back. 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 Get
Everyone may seem to get along with you at work, in your neighborhood, in your family, but the moment you mention the name Jesus Christ, that's when you see a fork in the world and those who are willing to gather with you scatter. Because of the name Jesus Christ, parents disown their daughters, they dissociate themselves from their sons and turn their backs on family members who have decided to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. The moment you mention repentance from sin, salvation from hell, faith in Jesus Christ and Christ alone, those that used to be your friends simply cannot get along with you anymore. Why? Because of the men and the message that we preach. There are many of you who on your jobs you've been told don't use that name. Some of you may have even been reprimanded for using that name. And, and here you are, you're forced supposedly to choose between your your job and your sustenance and feeding your family and, and using that name. And the temptation in that moment is to say, I, listen, I will do the same thing. I will say the same thing. I will just tiptoe around the name. So what do we do? The Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 22 and 24, But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto Greeks foolishness, but unto them which are called both the Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Jesus Christ is a stumbling block. You are hated for Christ's sake and despised because of the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. This hate and animosity will even come from the very people who are supposed to love us. Jesus said to the disciples that they were going to be hated even by their brothers and sisters because of the message of the gospel. You will be delivered up even by parents and brothers and relatives and friends and they will put some of you to death and you will be hated by all on account of my name. Everybody is going to hate you on account of my name right down to your intimate circle of friends and family. You're not just going to be hated by the Gentiles. You're going to be hated by the Jews. You're not just going to be hated by the Jews, you're going to be hated by your own parents and your own brothers and sisters who resent the gospel. You're going to be hated by everyone because of my name, for my name's sake because you identify with me. That is why Christians all over the world are being persecuted because of who they represent. They are imprisoned and killed by the thousands because of the spirit who lives in them. They are targeted because of the message they preach. That message convicts sinners of their sin and tells them clearly that if they do not repent and put their faith in Jesus Christ, they will die and go to hell. That message the world hates and rebels against God's for it. This rebellion is found in everything that we do and touch, and it's happening ever increasingly on every level in our culture and in every sector of our society. For every age group, we are seeing a rise in blatant, in your face rebellion against God. It's in the stores you shop in. It's in the schools where you send your children to. Our military commanders have turned their backs on God. Our teachers have turned their backs on the truth of the Bible. Our doctors, universities, and government more and more seem to be collectively building a new Tower of Babel painted in rainbow colors, shaking their fists against God. And since they cannot literally fight God, they redirect their hate and animosity towards the representatives of God, namely Christians. We think about 160,000 Christians are killed every year since 1990. This persecution will get worse, far worse in the time of tribulation. Now, I don't want you to be surprised to any of this because Jesus over and over again during his earthly ministry warned the disciples and ultimately us. He warned us of what the world will say in response to our preaching. He warned us of what this ungodly culture will do to us and how they will react to the message of the cross. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 1.18, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. And again in Romans 1.16, the Apostle Paul defines the characteristic of the gospel by saying, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. That message the world hates. Why does Paul, as it were, need to come to this point at the end of his letter and say, boy, if you don't hear anything else, listen to this. Why is this charge so necessary? For time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. 
As for you, always be sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. Why do we need to be charged to do that? Because there's a price to pay when you do that in the midst of a culture that loves you if you do everything else but that. This doesn't make sense to me. Why would anyone hate the message of salvation from sin and hell? The Bible instructs us that to believe in Christ is not simply a profession of words or a prayer that we pray as we go back to our sins and former way of life. To believe in Christ is to give up all that we are for all that he is. To believe in Christ is to run away from our sins and never look back and surrender our life to God. To believe in Christ is to die to this world and its futile pleasures and live according to his word and his spirit. To believe in Christ is to hate your mother and father and even your own life. That is to say, your love for Jesus Christ must be primary and above everything else. Jesus says in Luke 14, 26, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. The world loves the things that are in the world and hates the things of the kingdom of God. The world loves its sins and the pleasures of the darkness. Are you going to love the world and reject God? Are you going to love the things that are in the world and turn your back on God? My friend, listen to me. You must leave the world and the things that are in the world because the gavel has been dropped and there was a verdict. Jesus said in John 3 19, this is the verdict. Light has come into the world but people love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. This Canadian pastor named David Lynn was falsely accused and arrested simply because he was sharing the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ in a gay community and the reason why they got him arrested was not because he was causing disturbance, it was not because he was unloving, unkind, and he was disturbing the peace of the neighborhood. They got him arrested because they loved darkness instead of light. They got him arrested because they loved their sins more than the truth of the gospel. They got him arrested for fear that their deeds of homosexuality would be exposed. The world hates the light, they hate the gospel, they hate Christ and everything and everyone who represents God. So what do we do? Set apart Christ the Lord as holy and always be ready to give an answer to anyone who asks you the reason for the hope that is in you, yet do it with gentleness and respect. I have to be honest that it sometimes bothers me to see the ferocity with which the world embarks on their quest to snuff out the truth of the gospel. But I'm so much more encouraged because Jesus said the world would behave exactly that way. John 15 verse 18 says, if the world hates you, understand that it hated me first. If you were of the world, it would love you as its own. Instead, the world hates you because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. Jesus said again in John 14, 16, I will ask the Father and it will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him for he lives with you and will be in you. And as we are being shunned, ostracized, arrested, persecuted, and killed by the world, we will praise God for we have someone that the world doesn't have. We know someone that this world does not know. It is the Spirit of God. And in the midst of trials and tribulations, we sing, it is well with me. In the midst of arrests and false accusations, we sing, it is well with my soul. As we get thrown into prison cells, we we rejoice and as our feet and arms are being shackled yet we praise him forevermore for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain even though you will be hated by all on account of my name yet not a hair of your head will perish you may die but you're gonna be okay The worst that can happen to the believer is the best that can happen to the believer. The preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ is the only hope for the sin-cursed world. And until the day we draw our last breath, we will continue boldly preaching and proclaiming the name of Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life. And at this moment, I'd like to kindly extend an invitation to you to subscribe to the channel if you love and appreciate our content and help us share the videos and spread the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And if this is your first time on the channel and you made it this far in the video, well, thank you for watching. I hope to see you in our next video with Loving Christ, John Henry with the Gospel of Christ.